Hello, and welcome to the Community IT Innovators Technology Topics Podcast, where we discuss nonprofit technology, cybersecurity, tech project implementation, strategic planning, and nonprofit IT careers. Find us at communityit.com. Welcome to the February Community IT Innovators Webinar. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about information management basics. It's our great pleasure to co-present today's webinar with our friends at Build Consulting. My name is Johan Hammerstrom, and I'm the president and CEO of Community IT and the moderator for this series. Before we begin, we'd like to share a few webinar tips that we think will help you enjoy and get the most out of this webinar. Uh, most importantly, we encourage you to interact with us by asking questions via the GoToWebinar chat feature, and you can also connect with us uh, during and after the webinar on Twitter. We'd like to remind you to avoid multitasking during the webinar. You may just miss the best part. If you do happen to miss the best part, or if you need to leave this webinar early, or you want to watch a section of the webinar again, or share it with someone in your circle, we will be posting links to the recording and slides on our website, on our YouTube channel, and on our SlideShare account. In case you're not familiar with Community IT, our skilled and certified team of IT professionals serves the greater Washington nonprofit community, helping organizations of all sizes and capacities to advance their missions through the effective use of technology. We're deeply invested in the nonprofit community. We've served over 900 nonprofits since 1993, and we take a strategic and collaborative approach that fits the unique needs and culture of nonprofit organizations. And now it's my pleasure to uh, turn this over to our presenter today, Peter Maris, to introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about Build Consulting. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Johan. Uh, as Johan said, my name is Peter Miris. I'm a partner at Build Consulting. Uh, Build Consulting does information strategy consulting exclusively for nonprofit organizations, both in the DC metropolitan area and beyond. And information strategy means helping people with the information management aspects of their uh, organization. Um, and that can take the form of providing uh, technology roadmaps or uh, data roadmaps, it can take the form of part-time CIO engagements or uh, system selections and implementation projects. So whereas uh, community IT works more in the IT inf infrastructure space um, as well as some enterprise information systems, we work almost exclusively with information systems and data management systems. I'd like to start out with just a brief thought, uh, and we consider this uh, to be the most important formula uh, that for nonprofit information management, and it's OO plus NT equals EOO, and that stands for old organization plus new technology equals expensive old organization. So the message here is that organizations that think technology will solve all of their ills usually set themselves up for information management failure. A good information management is born out of a good culture um, and successful nonprofit cultures focus on all five of the key areas of information management that we'll be talking about today of which technology is only one and the last of the five. Um, so today we hope to share with you uh, some information management keys uh, that you can use to help improve your own projects as well as uh, to use as talking points with others in your organization when you are um, trying to uh, advocate for good information management practices. So first we just want to talk about what information management is. Uh, and it, it's as simple as it sounds. It's the management of information, uh, data, and the knowledge derived from it. A lot of people think about data as something that's uh, in a table format in an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and it is that. Um, and information is inclusive of that, but also uh, your more qualitative information, sort of your documents, your reports, uh, other things that are extrapolated from data and used to tell the story of the organization. It could include media assets, uh, et cetera. It could inst include constituent data. 
And most of the information today is managed either between our ears uh, or within information systems. So information management is just that, it's the management of information. And there are five keys to information management. Uh, and these are they, uh, leadership, operations, processes, data, and technology. And we're just gonna briefly talk about each of those in turn, and then we'll spend the rest of the time on your questions. So leadership is critical to good information management. When leadership is engaged in setting the vision and strategy and making key decisions, it's typical that information management projects go much more smoothly. Um, and we've seen this time and time again, uh, as projects tend to uh, improve or decline based on the level of leadership engagement. Um, so one example is, we worked with a nonprofit client over 18 months uh, on, on a major information management initiative. And progress and success tend to relate directly to the leadership's commitment to participating and making key decisions at critical times. When that was happening, everything went really smoothly. And that when it wasn't happening, the attention of the organization tended to wander. Uh, so it's important that the leadership understand the importance of their visible role inside of information management projects. Operations is the next key. Uh, and uh, we are talking here mostly about people, project management, and communications. So. You have to have the right people on the bus. Uh, be sure to have good project planning and management, and particularly time management. Uh, one of the things that we tend to see as being uh, common in nonprofits is that uh, it's assumed, practically speaking, that everybody's time is infinite. Uh, so that can cause a lot of time crunch and, and attention deficit. Uh, disorder during information management projects is, as the information project is competing with other interests for people's time uh, and it's impossible to get everything done. So really estimating the amount of time that it's going to take to realistically complete an information management initiative and getting people's buy-in and commitment to that time is important. Uh, and communications of course is always key. We worked with a, a national nonprofit uh, that made sure to have the right people involved, sound project organization at Thorough Communications, and they had a lot of success in their information management practices. Um, and uh, making real commitments to that, not just in, in, in word, but in action is really important. And um, I'm sure there are plenty of questions about who are the right people to include and how to create a project management process for information management projects within a, an organization that's not really project-centric, um, and I'm sure we can get into those later on. So processes are, are really important, and a lot of people think about process design or, or documentation. Uh, it's more than just coming up to do with the best way to do something. Uh, sure, you have to have sufficient documentation of the processes, but above all, executing the processes consistently is, is what's important. It's one thing to agree on a standard process while everyone's in the conference room, and another to actually put it into practice when everyone's back at their desk. Um, so so when, you're, uh, when you're trying to do data collection, um, it's really important to have everyone following the same processes. Otherwise, the data loses its integrity very quickly. So you want to design the processes and document them for sure, but execution is key. And then data uh, must be consistently collected. It has to be well organized and maintained over time. And above all, it has to be used. Uh, so organizations have to do all four of those things well with data in order to have an effective information management environment. So if I, I, we've had a number of occasions at different clients where uh, there would be one or more problems in each area, uh, but I'm just going to focus on using the data uh, for, for, for the moment. Um, you know, organizations will have information that they don't even know that they have or the entire organization at least isn't aware. Um, so there'll be information available for the asking. Uh, maybe it's in a system, hopefully it is, 
uh, but people aren't always using it to make decisions. I remember reading a survey of nonprofits in the United Kingdom a couple years back that said uh, over 80% of nonprofit organizations co collected some data about the impact of their programs, and only 6% actually use that data to inform their decision-making processes. So that's uh, that's kind of a uh, stark analysis. Uh, it's definitely something that's getting better over time as organizations get better at data collection. Uh, but a lot of emphasis is is sometimes placed on data collection and not on enough on using it efficient effectively. And that's where the payoff is for the collection. So understanding how to use data once you have it is important. And then finally, we get to technology, uh, the shiny toys. Uh, Technology really needs to be aligned to the four prior keys. Uh, if, if the technology doesn't serve the vision of the organization as expressed by leadership, if it's not consistent with the operational practices of the organization and well supported, uh, if it doesn't reflect the processes that the organization needs to conduct in order to be successful in its mission, and if it doesn't serve to properly collect, uh, maintain, uh, organize, and, and use data, then it's pointless. Uh, so new technology will, for the most part, not make up what is lacking in other areas of information management. Uh, and ultimately, technology is great, uh, and and it can be fun to implement, uh, at least for technology folks, perhaps not for other people so much. Uh, and it can do amazing things, but you really have to get all of your ducks in a row. So I'm just going to conclude the, the talking part or the presentation part of this uh, webinar by emphasizing to what extent the, the, first, the last two of these, data and technology, are dependent on the first three. Um, and again, we talked about the importance of leadership uh, and operations and processes and how the consistent uh, application of processes, you know, well-founded operational practices and great leadership are, are critical to having uh, effective data and using it and, and leveraging technology to, to do that. Um, so if you don't have the first three right, your odds of getting the latter two right are really a difficult proposition. So there's, there's a, there's an, episode that we could do uh, for each one of these areas. Today's goal was just to give a brief overview in as short a period of time as possible to just start those seeds of ideas uh, building in the in the minds of, of our audience today uh, and really just to take the time to answer your questions. Um, you know, it's one thing to talk about doing these things and pre present them on paper but quite another to figure out how to apply them within your own organization's culture. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it for for now and happy to dive into any one of these areas uh, with any uh, questions that you guys might have. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, it's a great introduction to information management, and I think it, it's a good opportunity to kind of explore some of these areas in more, in more detail, um, particularly as they impact any of you in the audience today and um, issues that you're dealing with, you know, at your organization. So um, we have a question here. Uh, if you could talk a little bit more about uh, management of photos and videos, you know, that's a key type of information that I think is, you know, uh, still challenging, you know, for people to manage effectively, um, particularly the metadata uh, that, that goes along with um, photos and videos. Yeah, that's a great question. It's something that a lot of organizations really struggle with, uh, particularly if they're moving to uh, their file management in the cloud. Uh, previously, they were managing all of their files on a local shared drive. If they're moving all of that into Office 365 or Google Apps, what's an efficient way to do the media management? And it's usually a multi-tiered solution, so um, I won't get into a lot of details, but you, you might have... Uh, sort of an area where you do collection of a lot of different assets. Um, you, sometimes organizations have a ton of photos. They dump them all into a file folder and nobody ever goes through them and assigns metadata to them or prioritizes them or clears them for public use. 
Um, so, uh, and it's so w sometimes what we recommend is that people have one location in the cloud where they keep a, a very well uh, curated set of assets. Um, and then they have an, another location that's less well structured um, where they sort of dump things uh, while they're waiting to be processed. So for example, you might have a lot of photos coming into your organization. You might actually want to keep them on your local share drive as the most efficient place to manage them and go through them uh, and curate them and then upload the ones that have the most durable quality for marketing purposes or for supporting program reports um, into a curated area that could be a Adobe uh, Creative Cloud storage environment, it could be a Dropbox environment, it could be SharePoint uh, Media Asset Library. So there, there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. Um, something I'd be happy to address more in a follow-up email message with whomever asked the question. Okay, great. Um, got some other questions here. Uh, any particular tips for houses of worship? Um, anything special about uh, managing information for a house of worship? <laughs> That's a pretty broad question. Um, I know there are parish systems that uh, that help to manage um, uh, parishioner information about their families, uh, create automatic, automated giving processes, track interests in different ministries and programs. Uh, that's not really our area of expertise. Uh, we usually don't work directly with parishes or dioceses. Um, uh, so I would say that one of the key challenges for the parishes that I have worked with in the past is just being able to come up with the resources to support a good information system from a cost standpoint. Um, fortunately, the, the available tools, I know just broadly speaking, have, have become much better, um, but outside of, of connecting the person to what my parish uses specifically, which seems to work pretty well. I don't have any additional insights to offer in that area. Okay. Um, any, any sort of broad recommendations about um, data visualization as a way of um, performing data analysis? Sure. So data visualization tools are great for a couple of different reasons. One is that it really helps organizations to see their data quality. Um, for some reason, if you show somebody an Excel spreadsheet and point to missing data within a column, it doesn't have the same impact as showing them the percentage of missing data that there is on a graph or a pie chart. Uh, so um, there's a lot of different ways to get a, a good sense of how good quality your data is uh, by looking at it through data visualization tools. Um, we usually recommend either Tableau or Power BI. Um, some of our clients are using other tools that have data visualization aspects to them, whether it's dashboarding or reporting capabilities that are built in, uh, various case management solutions, CRMs. Um, other clients are using uh, uh, GIS uh, type tools or SPSS to do some aspects of data analysis and visualization. Um, and others are even using uh, verbatim text analysis tools to do analysis of qualitative information and, and do visualizations from that, um, even it down to analyzing emotional uh, trends within or emotional needs within their audience. Um, so there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of tools available. Uh, I've mentioned a few of them. There are a lot more out there. Um, We've written about that a little bit on the blog in thisisbuild.com, uh, so uh, people can check that out. Go to the blog and search for data visualization if they want to get some more information about that, or they can uh, send us a message with specific questions, and we'll be happy to, happy to answer those. Could you repeat, uh, Peter, the name of the data visualization tools? Sure. Uh, I'll, Tableau. I'll, I'll, chat, um, I'll chat these out as you as you... Tableau. Okay. okay. Tableau um, and uh, Power BI, which is come can is available as a part of Office 365 as well. Okay. Um, and uh, there are a lot of other tools out there, um, but those those tend to be the ones that are most frequently used by nonprofits, in part because of the accommodating pricing that's available. Um, and Tableau Public, in particular, if you don't mind having the data that you're analyzing available in a public forum or if it's already 
uh, or if it's already um, a matter of public record, um, you can use Tableau Public for free and do your analysis uh, the, and present your visualizations there. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, let's see. All right, this is a great question. It's um, it's a little bit long, so just bear with me, Peter, as I <laughs> as I sure. work through it, because um, it's, it's a great concept or, or a challenge, you know, that I think often people face when trying to improve their information management. Um, so in a perfect world, it would be ideal to approach these steps in the order that you have them listed in, um, a kind of linear process that starts with leadership and ends with technology. Um, but sometimes, maybe even more than sometimes, uh, technology choices uh, sometimes need to be made earlier than maybe optimal you know, given the process you've got laid out. Or sometimes you're coming into a situation where the, the data choice has already been made, uh, the technology solution has already been implemented um, ahead of like coming up with the processes. So what are your recommendations for, you know, kind of changing um, or aligning sort of multiple processes in the context of technology um, for, you know, um, combining existing processes into new technology, et cetera, et cetera? That's a great question. Um, and it's one that we deal with a lot of all, all the time because we're coming into clients that have existing ecosystems, right? It's, it's rare that we start with a client that on the day that they were born. Um, so they've already got data practices and technology and processes in place and maybe they're looking to replace some of those. Maybe they're not looking to replace any of them. Um, so you, you you work it in as you can. Um, take the, you know, let's just say I'll give you an example. We went to a client that had I was using the Razor's Edge as their CRM and, and Illuminate Online marketing for their uh, marketing uh, sort of advocacy platform, and uh, we did an assessment of of how to improve their data quality, and. Over time, that led to improved processes and operational practices. Uh, but what we really need to do is get the buy-in of leadership by demonstrating at how the data that they had or the data that they didn't have but could get would either help or, in the absence of good data, hurt their organization. Uh, and once we were able to sort of create a couple of small projects and get buy-in around those and, and, and take those up to leadership and say, these are the impacts, um, then that starts to open minds a little bit. And, and so that, that opens the door for you to slowly start to in, improve processes and operational practices and, and, and get leadership to come around. So in this particular client, we started out just by doing a lot of data cleaning and scrubbing. And then we went out to each of the individual departments that were putting data into the razor's edge and Luminate Online and starting to work with them to understand their process gaps, uh, really uh, dig into what their biggest pain points were, uh, make some recommendations, some of which were solved by changing the technology or tweaking the technology a little bit, but many of which were just addressing their primary concerns, emotional baggage, gently providing education, uh, etc. And then, um, you know, doing things like developing a, a better way of receiving and triaging information or data requests. That, that's an op aspect of operations. Uh, coming up with a better way of estimating time spent in data projects. Uh, just helping the organization understand what it really took to run that data and technology um, uh, operations and sort of keep it humming. And so I would say that when we first came in, there were a lot of folks, uh, executives inside of the organization that had a distrust of the data and the tech, not the information systems uh, team. And we really had to work work within that organization to rebuild that trust. And, and it's the data and the capability of the technology to deliver. And by the time we were 18 months in, uh, leadership had really started connecting data to organizational performance uh, and out organizational outcomes that were mission oriented uh, to the point where they even started making data quality a part of um, performance evaluations for management and uh, their uh, department heads. 
So it's something that's built over time. Sometimes you need to harness the use of an outside voice to bring some perspective inside the organization. So it's not just the same people beating the same old drum over and over again. Uh, but uh, that's just one example. Um, and we've, we've worked in many such circumstances. Um, and uh, it really helps in this regard to to interact with peers within the community, whether it's uh, through N10 or uh, inside NGO or any of these others that have technology focus or a technology focus as part of what they do. And just hearing about the case stories of what kinds of successes organizations have been able to achieve that are analogous to your own organization and what they're doing with data um, and what kind of stories are available out there that you can kind of forward to or bring to the attention of decision makers inside of your team. They really help you sort of get upstream in the decision making process instead of um, always having to start out at the, the sort of hand the data and technology choices that are handed to you um, without complete consideration. So I hope that was a good answer to the question. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was. If uh, if there are follow-ups um, for the per person who asked that question, please um, please chat those in. And we're happy to keep the conversation going. Um, we got another question, Peter. Um, have you found good ways? Oh, this is a great one. Great questions today, by the way. I really appreciate all these really good, challenging situations that people are um, dealing with around data management. Have you found good ways, Peter, to encourage... Uh, volunteers or incent volunteers um, to uh, enter data and follow good data management processes. <laughs> yeah, there there are a bunch of different ways you can do that. I mean, we're dealing with an organization right now that has 10,000 volunteers distributed nationally. Um, so they're a very volunteer-driven organization, and a, a big part of our work is working with organizations that have a lot of volunteers um, that are. Uh, you know, federated, multi-chapter organizations um, with lots of volunteers. Um, so, uh, so there's there's a couple of different ways you can approach that. One is to just acknowledge that there's going to be no such thing as a perfect outcome. Um, volunteers are motivated by a lot of different things, but one of them usually isn't data entry. Um, so, but the second thing is, you know, try to make it as fun for people as possible. Uh, and and by fun, I mean a couple of different things. One is trying to give them as low friction of a data uh, entry process as humanly possible. Really good interfaces available for mobile devices that streamline data capture. The ability to do it in the moment when you're actively thinking about it um, is really important. Uh, and that makes it more fun for people to do data entry just because it gives them experience. And believe it or not, um, their experience with your technology sort of accrues to the brand of your organization as well. And what I mean by that is their perception of your competency as an organization and how proud they are to be associated with your mission also comes in part from how they interact with you. And if they're interacting with you through a data entry system, then their impression of you is in part going to be formed by that. Um, so that actually has a relationship to fundraising as well and, and increased volunteer engagement if you make it easy for them to help you. Uh, and another thing is you can, if you have an online community or, or have the opportunity to develop one, you can sort of games or allow awards, recognitions, and badges based on how much data entered and has been entered or the quality of the data um, uh, and sort of make it fun, make it possible for people in the volunteer community to be recognized for their achievements or for their uh, contributions from a data standpoint, um, especially if it's activity data, things that they've done. Um, if you give them a, an opportunity to be award, receive an award or a recognition for it, even if it's a badge on their e-profile. Um, so those are two good ways to practical and one a little bit more uh, sort of fun and creative. Just wanted to um, give everyone a heads up. We are moving our webinars. They've traditionally been on Thursdays. And starting next month, we are now going to be holding them on Wednesdays. So it gives you something to look forward to in the middle of the week. Um, kind of get you over that, um, that late Wednesday afternoon and get you going through the rest of your week. So we are going to be covering security readiness 
Uh, it's going to be March 15th. I really strongly encourage everyone to attend this webinar. We have seen an unprecedented number of security breaches uh, in the first five, six weeks of 2017. It's really um, kind of, and we were, we were prepared. Security was our top priority already going into the year. And we were kind of shocked by the number of incidents we've, we've experienced uh, just in the first five to six weeks of the year. So um, we have been, we've made it an even bigger priority for us and our clients to um, really get ready uh, on security issues, cybersecurity issues. And there's some, some important things that every nonprofit organization should be doing right now to really secure their network and their information. So we strongly encourage you to join us next month to hear more about that. Um, again, that'll be Wednesday, March 15th at four o'clock. So we will we'll send out that notice in a couple of weeks and you can register for the webinar then. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much, Peter, uh, for your time. This was uh, fantastic. You. And um, we look forward to having Build back again with us on our webinar series very soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Community IT does these free webinars and podcasts for our community, and we love sharing our knowledge and experience. If you have more questions or are having trouble with your IT at your nonprofit, please get in touch with us on our website, www.communityit.com, so we can start a conversation or schedule an assessment. Downloading any of our free resources there will get you signed up for our webinar reminders, and you can attend our next webinar in real time and ask our experts your own questions. If you love podcasts, please subscribe and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits.